Once again, ladies, thank you so much for joining me inside our Sister Sense Power Circle. Today's call is an extension of last night's call, which was Speak, Teach, Coach, How to See Profit and Progress. It was a clarity session for women entrepreneurs. And so um, both of these sessions are actually inspired by this week's upcoming five-day training series that I'm starting this week. And that one in particular is called Pro Webinars. For those who are interested in creating webinars, virtual products, information products, so that essentially you can motivate other women, monetize your message, and really learn how to market better online. So, of course, if you would like to sign up for the five-day training on hosting your own webinars and conferences online, you can get information about that at prowebinars.sysdefense.com. The bonus there was the first five ladies who signed up uh, they get a one-on-one -on -one clarity session with me, and I'm past five at this point. But what I decided to do was for today, if you sign up within the between now and an hour from our session today, so between now and two, the first two ladies who sign up within that period, I'll also do a clarity session with you as well so you don't feel like you missed out on that opportunity. Um, but, yes, our session today, we're talking about five webinar-based income streams. And again, I wanted to really focus on those ladies in the circle who are either interested in speaking, teaching, coaching, and really sharing your message, figuring out how to get that done. So kind of continuing from where we left off yesterday, I said two things. One, my goal is to help you become a pro. I want you to become a professional, to see progress, and to make profit online. And so what I want you to do within that time frame is figure out how you can start to monetize without waiting, whether it be waiting to get speaking engagements, waiting to get the book done, or waiting for people to buy the book, waiting for the blog to get you know, off to where it needs to be so that you're the next big Huffington Post. I want you to figure out how you can realistically monetize now within a smaller circle where you are and build organically from there versus waiting, right? Because, again, today is now March 10th. It could just as easily be March 10th, 2015. The time goes by very quickly, and we want to make sure that we're making the most of our time online, right? So we're going to have an uh, internal Q&A session today. I'm going to basically explain five different webinar-based income streams that you may want to tap into. I was doing a clarity session, actually, I want to say about two weeks ago, and, and my client, you know, she said, you know, LaShonda, I know I can do a webinar like this, and I know I can do one like this and that. Which one of these should I do? I don't know what to do, which is why I have these clarity sessions so that you can get clear about your agenda and move forward. The worst thing to be is stuck, right? And you really kind of want to get that stuff out of your head and into the virtual space so you feel like you're making progress and moving towards the profit that you're looking for in your business. So um, the first one that you can consider is when you do a webinar training, and let me just say this. Um, I'm assuming that the people on the call know what webinars are, right? When you call in or whether you're on your smartphone or your computer, you log in, you get to see a presentation of some kind, usually PowerPoint, or the person who is presenting is showing you something online. They're um, actually either showing it to you live or they're doing a presentation, right? versus a conference call where you get on a call like we're doing today and you listen to someone, right? So in my pro webinars training, essentially what I'll be teaching is how to put together, promote, package, and profit from doing webinars. But at the same time, most of what I'm saying you can apply to a teleconference as well, right? Now, when I started out, I always said I'm a typer, not a talker. <laughs> so live was very, very intimidating for me. One of the first partnerships I did online was with Rochelle Shaw. We created the Women of Color Coaching Program and got together and did one-on-one -on -one sessions with women entrepreneurs interested in having a combination of online marketing strategies from me and six-figure million-dollar business setup strategies from her so that we could work together and complement each other really well. 
And so in the process of doing that, I was like, I don't want to talk to people live. <laughs> I just want to put the information out there. And it took a while for me to become comfortable with that. So before I did live webinars, my first monetization for webinars, income stream, was to pre-record e-courses so that I knew that for me, I always want to make sure that my information is on point. I'm giving everybody what they need to know. There are no hiccups. Um, I don't feel like somebody catches me off guard online and I'm like, oh, what do I say? You know, just kind of little things like that. So for those of you who are transitioning and you are maybe an introvert, you're like me, maybe a typer, not a talker, you may want to consider doing pre-recorded sessions first, putting it together in some form of an e-course, and then selling your product that way versus doing something live. Okay, so again, the advantage here is that you can have everything prepared um, and that you don't necessarily have to wait to put your information out there or you have to wait for people to sign up and register. There are a lot of pros and cons to each of the different ones that I'm going to talk about today, but the idea here is I want to give you a better sense of how each of these works. And based on either your profit, um, your income, your time, your, your, your affiliate circle, excuse me, I want you to be able to look at these and objectively say, well, this one might work better for me based on my personality and my business right now, okay? So the idea there here with number one is for a pre-recorded live session, essentially what you're going to do is think about a couple of things. One, you're going to think about um, how long it is you want your sessions to be. Okay, so for me, when I was starting out, I was doing presentations that were about 20 minutes long, and then I moved up to 60-minute sessions, right? So they don't necessarily have to be long in the beginning. You can do 15 to 20-minute sessions and then move from there. What I found for me is to add additional value when I did e-courses that were pre-recorded sessions, what I would like to do is I would say 15 to 20 minutes and then put maybe four of them together or seven of them together so then I can say this is an e-course series with four modules and seven modules, right? So you want to think about, again, how long you want your sessions to be. Um, if you're going to break it up into different modules, what topics you want to talk about in each particular session. And then you want to think, think about, of course, you know, I, I want to get through all of these today and actually have six and not five. So the logistics of putting together the webinar, that's what we're talking about for webinars, you know, putting together the, um, the presentation and putting together your package, how much you're going to charge for it, your, your promotion. Those things we're going to talk about in the five-day training. Today, I just want to give you a sense of, five, actually six different strategies that you can use, and then you figuring out which one of these, either you want to work with me in the, the webinar training or you want to do some research, however you want to do it, but you've got a point of reference to start from, from here. So, okay, that is number one, doing a webinar training series, but pre-recording it and then packaging it in a way that people can go and buy now, depending on where you are, again, you may want to just start out with one 15- to 30-minute session, or if you feel like you've got a lot of material, you can do one long 60-minute one, um, or you can break it up, like I mentioned before, into 15- to 20-minute mo uh, modules and do like a three-part, four-part, seven-part series so that you can just, again, call that an e-course versus calling it, you know, my webinar re replays. Usually I don't say replays unless it's something that um, I'm giving after I've done a live event. When I pre-record it and put together, put it in a bundle, I classify that as an e-course, okay? So that is option number one. Option number two is going the route of doing a live webinar and considering speaking on a particular topic as a trainer, right? So there are actually variations of doing live webinars that people have done versus um, having multiple people there. You setting up a webinar that you're going to do for yourself and you're the sole trainer for that series, okay? And so you want to think about are you doing one topic? Again, are you doing a series of topics? 
um, how long do you want your webinar training to be. When I did my first live workshop, I did three days, She Rocks the Web, and it was in, back in, I believe, 2012, and I lost my voice. <laughs> I lost my voice on day, day two because I did not account for the fact that I was going to be the only person talking for three days. <laughs> But it worked out, and it worked out fine. It's a little different on a webinar. It's not so labor intensive, especially when you're in a live space and you want to make sure. And at the time, I didn't have a mic, so I wanted to make sure that I was elevating my voice enough. Um, so that's something to consider. You know, if I'm going to do a live presentation training, um, how, like I mentioned before, how long do you want it to be? But are you going to be the sole person doing this particular training? And how many people do you want in your training? Okay, so um, what I've done in the past is I like to do trainings that are, you know, if it's hands-on, I want it to be a smaller group versus if it's larger and it's a, a kind of a lecture-style training and you're sharing information like I'm sharing today, it's a lecture-style versus an activity training where I want to be able to stop and ask different uh, questions to the, the people who are participating and have them do activities that I can, you know, to either take a look at or give them feedback on. So you want to think about, um, am I going to make it interactive versus am I going to make it lecture style? And if it is going to be interactive, can I do a training that's about 45, 50 people, or should it be small? Should it be somewhere between 5 to 10 people? How am I going to position myself in that respect, okay? Now, when you think about you're doing live trainings, you have the option of, again, either doing one that's just you, or you can do a webinar series with a series of, speakers, which I'm sure that you've seen, right? You've seen people do things like that. I've actually invited a couple of you all to participate in a live webinar that I was not hosting, but one of the wonderful ladies, experts in the Power Circle, she was doing a, a virtual conference last week. It was a teleconference, actually, not a webinar series. But there is an option for you to create your own webinar and then get a group of speakers together. I'm actually working with a client putting together her teleconference um, but when I did Back to Business, and I do Back to Business every year, that's a webinar conference. So if you're going to do that, you want to think about what my topic, what, you know, what's the core focus of this particular series, and then who do I want to invite as far as speakers are concerned to host or you know, present in my particular webinar series. When I do my Power Circle conference, it's strictly experts that I know, that I've worked with, that I've heard speak, that I feel are credible, because my concept with the power circle is that I'm connecting you to my power experts. You don't necessarily have to do that. You may find yourself in a position where you say, oh, well, I don't really know that many people yet. I'm still starting out. And then you have the opportunity to venture out, which I'm going to talk to about different, again, revenue streams, venture out and invite. I've, I've gotten emails from people who said, you know, LaShonda, I would love for you to speak as part of my webinar conference that I didn't necessarily know, but then they were going out and seeking out speakers, okay? And I'll talk about when it comes to the different monetization models, if you want to go that route versus going to people that you know, okay? Now, here's one that is particularly interesting when it comes to speakers. There are, are different ways to, to monetize these um, strategies as far as am I going to put it together for myself versus have speakers versus do it for free, charge for it. So let's talk about that. When it comes to putting together a webinar, are you going to charge for it or is it going to be for free, one or the other? Now, in the case when you do webinars for free, there's generally a reason behind it. So for example, you may want to do a promotional webinar so that you can do um, a 15 to 60-minute training, give people a sense of who you are, what you do, why you're cred credible. Maybe you have some of your customers or clients on the call so that they can back you up. You know, you have that wingman, and they're like, yes, yeah, she's awesome. She's the best speaker. Coach, you definitely have to sign up for what she has. And then Somewhere strategically, whether it be throughout the call or at the end of the call, you say, well, based on this information, based on the training, here is something that I want to offer to you. 
So it's free, but again, with the intent of bringing in people, giving them an opportunity to hear you, share a presentation, and then sell them something at the end, whether it be a product or service, right? So that's one option. And then in some cases, depending on how you structure your webinar, you may sell that session itself. So when it's strictly promotional and you have minimal content as far as coaching and recommendations, you don't necessarily sell those. Really, the, the core is at the end of it, I'm selling you a specific product or service. So this is why I'm doing this training webinar for free. Okay, I was working with one particular client. He does real estate, and so he's putting together training modules so at the end he can ultimately promote his um, expertise as a real estate agent and help, um, I think he was doing refinancing in, um, goodness, I forget what, what state he's in, but um, doing the training so ultimately he can sell his package and his ebook at the ending. That's why it was free, okay? Versus when you do a free training, with a wealth of information, but at the end, you say, okay, if you want access to the replays and if you want access to additional information, like let's say, for example, you had worksheets or you have other videos that you want to add on to that, then you would charge at the ending, right? So those are two types of uh, free webinars that you would put together, either one, so that you can, again, share your credibility, share some information or recommendations, even maybe talk to potential clients one-on-one, -on -one, and then at the end of that, sell them a particular package, or do a more informational webinar training with the intent of selling the replays and or additional products, worksheets, and content like eBooks and things like that at the end of the session, right? So that's one way to look at it for if it's free. Now let's talk about if you were doing webinars where you had speakers involved, right? Again, you have one option of doing your webinar series and then charging upfront, okay? So uh, you will say, okay, I'm going to do a webinar series um, uh, conference and I'm going to have 12 speakers in my conference and it's going to be $97. So you've got your 12 speakers, it's $97, and people have to pay upfront to get access to your webinar. That's pretty straightforward. People get that. Where people tend to get confused is when it's for free, right? But let me, let me, before I talk about free webinars with speakers, let me talk about speakers, webinars, and when you're paying up front. So a lot of times people will say, okay, well, I want to do a webinar series, and I want to get speakers, I want to get big names. How does this work? <laughs> you know, um, do I have to pay everybody to speak at my particular event? What do I do? So um, there are different ways that you work this model. For example, when you are inviting speakers who know you and you know them, um, oftentimes people will speak at your webinar for free as an opportunity for them to gain experience, for them to, you know, say, you know, I'm speaking at XYZ event because speakers, again, want to build up their credibility. Um, also, it may be an opportunity for them to sell a particular service. So there are times where I'll do a webinar and I will allow my speakers, in addition to just telling people about who they are and what they do, to share a particular product at the end of the webinar. So sometimes people will speak for free if they have an opportunity to either um, have access to your list or to promote a product in exchange for them giving of their time and their expertise for free. Now, again, there may be some speakers, you may want a big name speaker on your roster so that if you're going to do a huge webinar event and you want to bring in more people, that you may have to pay up front. Or if there are people who you're unfamiliar with, they may not want to work with you because they don't know you quite yet. So, um, you know, for me, the rule of thumb is generally to start off with people who you know or to really be clear on what kind of incentives you're going to provide to a speaker so that they would say, okay, I'm interested in speaking at your event for free. So then again, if you know, you're charging $97 for a conference, you can pocket that money versus having to give it out. Now, one other thing that I like to do when I'm doing webinars and not charging, I'm sorry, not I am charging, but not providing speakers with an, uh, an actual payment 
for their time is, again, either offering them the opportunity to share a product or service within that conference or offering them the opportunity to make, generate revenue through an affiliate link, which is another way for you to both market your webinar but also give people an incentive. So if I'm doing a webinar conference and my general circle of affiliates in, um, on SysAscents, they promote it, they may get anywhere between 20 to 25% per sale. And then my speakers, I'll give them anywhere between 50 to 75% per sale just as an incentive to promote it. And also when you think about it, when you've got speakers who are established and credible, you want them to promote it because either their lists are comparable or bigger than your own, and you know that you're getting assistance with marketing. You know, speakers, obviously, the more credible they are, the more valuable they are to you, obviously, you know, they've got a lot going on in their time. So you want to give them as many incentives as possible to work with you, okay? So, again, that's one option when you have speakers uh, and you charge in the beginning up front. The other option, again, is when you have a free webinar conference, a webinar day, webinar series. Sometimes people have, um, you know, 20, 30 women, and they do, like, you know, a series for the whole month. You know, that's something to think about. And I'm going to have a, a checklist for you at the end of kind of my lecture, right, style right, right now, just for some things for you to consider when it comes to, well, which one of these should I do? Um, you have the opportunity to have a webinar and not charge up front, but then say, okay, well, I want my webinar to be free, right? And so I'm going to do a three-day webinar conference, and I want it to be free. I'm going to have all these wonderful speakers on it. How do you monetize it? Most people monetize it in the back end. So they'll have a, three free, uh, a free three-day webinar conference at the end of it, they will say, or, you know, throughout it strategically in the beginning when people sign up or during the sessions, um, you know, okay, well, I thanks so much for listening to this webinar conference. If you want the replays and or if you also want to get access to our materials, um, maybe access to a back-end membership website, here, sign up for $47, $97, $197, whatever price point they choose based on um, the value they've attached to their series, that is when – they will attach a price to the back end versus the front end, okay? So either you're charging in the beginning or in, like in the case of doing uh, a webinar, which you're charging back end versus the put on the main. It's because they want more butts in the virtual seats, right? people, a thousand people, two thousand people to come in and then that gives them the ability to make more return per sale. So if they've got, you know, a thousand people coming to a free webinar conference or a hundred people, two hundred people coming to a free conference, they have an ideal amount or percentage of that one thousand people, let's say two hundred people. I want to do a, a webinar conference make it free, promote it for about two to three weeks, have my speakers promote it, have affiliate promotions, so that I can say if I get 200 of that 1,000 to download or purchase the replays for $200, that is an opportunity for me to make $4,000 for that day. Okay? So that is when someone will do a free session and then charge it in the back end versus doing a paid session. Now, um, as I mentioned before, this week I'm doing the – the first three days of my five-day training pro webinars for those who are interested in getting the specifics of hosting, creating your webinars and your teleconferences from start to finish, the product, the package, the presentation. Some people don't know how to put together the PowerPoint. I've got a template. All of that is at prowebinars.sysense.com. And as I mentioned, um, for the first two ladies who sign up within the next two hours today, I will give you an additional one-on-one -on -one session with me so we can talk about your ideas. So that's an opportunity to work with a small group, which is something I talked about yesterday. You know, I want to be a speaker. There's no speaker ferry, right? So, you know, everybody, you know, I talk to you, says, well, you know, I have a book and I'm looking for people, um, opportunities to get speaking engagements. Until you get to a point where you've built your credibility, 
most of the speaking engagements you do are going to be for free, or they're going to be at your church for free, or at a, I mean, a local university for a low cost, maybe $100, $150. It's going to be nominal until you really get to the point where people go, ah, I want her. She's a Valerie Burton. She's a Lisa Nichols. You know, she's Oprah. You know, but until you get to that status, you have to get it on your own soapbox, which is what I did with Sister Sense, and create a space that you can monetize so that either you're doing um, a, a free conference or a webinar and you're saying, okay, I want to get in a couple of hundred people for free and sell them on the replay, or you're charging in the front end and saying, okay, well, if I get in, and I mentioned this example yesterday, if you do um, your own webinar conference and you get 30 people in at $100, that's $3,000 up front versus saying, okay, I, I want to get in 500 people and seeing if I then for free and then seeing if I can convert those, a percentage of those 500 people into, you know, a couple of thousand dollars. So, again, the, the idea here is when you're going to um, charge up front, you know you're going to make a certain amount of guaranteed sales, number one. Number two, you don't need as many people when you charge up front to make a certain amount versus when you're doing it for free, you're going to want to bring in, hundreds, if not at least a thousand people, so that the, the probability of you turning more of those people into buyers is higher, right? So, you know, if you do a free webinar and you get five people on that call and nobody buys, well, you got five people on the call. <laughs> so it's harder to sell five people versus if you had those five people pay, pay up front, that was guaranteed money, okay? So you want to look at it as such, free versus paid. Now, another model that is actually becoming very popular, and, and trends change over time, right? You know, in the beginning, there were more so teleconferences than anything else, and then webinars became popular, and so those became very popular. Um, and then different kind of strategies of webinars started to surface. Now, um, fairly new, but a different way to – strategically monetize the webinar is to charge the speakers and the attendees. So the attendees get access, and you get guaranteed money, but you charge the speakers versus the attendees. So you may be saying, hmm, okay, how exactly am I going to charge people to speak? <laughs> well, the, the approach that I've seen used very strategically and actually um, in a smart way is to target speakers who are looking for exposure and looking for content. And so let's say you say to your potential speakers, I'm going to create an event and I'm going to bring in 500 entrepreneurs, 500 women. I'm going to do that. I'm going to get those butts in seats for you. Now, what you get when you pay to be a part of my speaker roster is, one, you get known as a speaker or expert within my circle. So you get um, to be affiliated with me. And, you know, for some people, especially when you're coming on up, to get that expert affiliation that they can then use is important. And so they'll invest in themselves for that, number one. Number two, once you get in with me, we're going to do your session and to put together your presentation. I'm going to also give you your replays. And on top of your re replays, I'm going to transcribe your whole session so you get a document that's like a digital ebook with your session. So you get the expert credibility, you get your replay, you get an ebook, and you also get your PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to do all of this for, for you, plus you don't have to worry about marketing this event because I'm bringing in the 500 people. So this is basically an opportunity for you to go there, get exposure, and then when you get on the call, you get to sell your products and services to the list as well, so it's an opportunity to, for you to make sales. Who wouldn't want that, right? So those um, aspiring entrepreneurs looking for expert credibility, looking for circles that they can market to without having to figure out how do I need to bring those people, they will pay to speak, right? So you have an opportunity to think to yourself, well, Am I going to do a free session where it's just me? Am I going to do a free session where I've got a group of speakers? Am I going to do speakers where I pay up front? Am I going to do speakers where 
I charge or give them an offer in the back end, or am I going to do a speaker session where I charge the speakers to speak, right? So those are options that you have when you're putting together a webinar series to monetize it, right, based on where you are and what you're looking to accomplish. And I'm going to give you a Q&A session in just a bit um, so that you can kind of think about and write down what it is your objective is so that you can see if any of these would work best for you. Now, um, remember I told you I wanted to also give you an extra one here, and you can think about this as related to creating passive income for yourself. So for the most part, when you think about these sessions, um, you, you, you're thinking about, one, again, who's going to be there and how much you're going to charge, right? You also can think about when it comes to webinars, how often are you going to bring in money? So the first example I gave you was to do a pre-recorded session. Really, I targeted that towards people who feel a lot more comfortable doing something that's um, done where they're prepared beforehand, nothing's on the fly, nothing's live. So, you know, if you're kind of like anxious about, you know, te technical issues going wrong and, or, you know, somebody asking a question and you not knowing what to say or a speaker not coming on time or having to change, because a webinar is a virtual version of a, a live event. So just like live events, you've got to be able to, you know, roll with the punches, so to speak. So if you, for your comfort level, you may want to do a pre-recording. Now, when you do a pre-recorded course and you put it out there, that's an opportunity for you to sell that e-course for as long as you want or as short as you want, right? It's out there for, you know, for example, you go to my e-junkie store, um, e-store.sysdefense.com. I've got e-products that I just have on my shop and they sell whenever they sell, right? Versus when you do a live event, that's a little different. Your key courses, it's ongoing, it's software, it's training, it's up there, you sell it on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. For the most part, when people launch live events, it's so that they can make a certain amount of money in a short um, space of time and then move on to the next thing, right? So I don't necessarily do live webinars all the time. Um, I, I do them once every couple of months. So, you know, it's been – I did a Power Circle conference in January, and I'm doing the five-day pro webinars training in – this week in March, so it's been about two plus months since I've done an actual training session. And then prior to January, I did Books Buzz Business in October. So I want to say maybe every three months I do this module, right? So when you think about which one of these I want to do, when you're doing live trainings, usually it's so that you can strategically make um, a specific amount of money in over the course of either a day or a week. Um, even a month if that is your, your idea. But because it's live, obviously, that's when you're bringing in that revenue stream, okay? So of these five that I mentioned before, the other option, again, is related to passive income stream is when you consider doing a webinar that's ongoing, or that rather I should say consider doing ongoing training for a particular group. Perfect example and model of that is SysAssense. If you go on to SysAssense, join.sysdefense.com, essentially for anywhere between $7 and $97, you can join my insider circle and get access to Sysdefense. Every week I do my Jumpstart Your Business call, and uh, some weeks I do an actual call, like today I'm doing a call with you all, and some weeks I do a webinar training. I think a couple of weeks ago I did a training on Twitter marketing. I think that's what it was that I did. So... Uh, you can consider, as opposed to either doing a pre-recording or doing a live virtual event that's either, again, a day, a couple of days, a week, or a month, you can do one or two trainings for a membership group on a weekly or monthly basis as a different webinar-based income stream that, again, is closer related to passive income or, I would say, it's a combination. It's like um, your own membership, right? So it's a membership space, and it's subscription-based, so it's something that you can do on an ongoing basis. Now, of course, you need to think about if that's something you can commit to, and I'll talk about that once we get into our, you know, webinar checklist here. 
But again, that's another revenue, revenue stream. And how it's different ultimately is your live webinar, you may bring in anywhere between $1,000 to $5,000 for that particular set time frame. Your pre-recorded webinars or e-course, you're going to bring in money ongoing. It may not be one huge spurt, but then you'll get a couple of sales every day, every week, or every month, depending upon the kind of traffic that comes to your business, versus doing a webinar series that is ongoing, maybe for a group of, of um, in your industry, a group of clients, you do uh, private training once a week, once a month, webinar-based, and so that you can um, generate subscription con continuity income for yourself on a monthly basis, okay? So as you can see, you know, it's, there's a lot of different ways for you to get on your own soapbox, whether it be get on um, a teleconference call or do a virtual presentation and monetize it in more ways than one. It's just not the call. It's just not a PowerPoint presentation. You can do a lot of different things, and we're going to get into the Q&A just a bit. Like I said before, there's definitely an opportunity for you to really get into the nuts and bolts of what we're going to be talking about as far as putting your webinars together by going to prowebinars.sysdefense.com. You know, from start to finish, I'm going to go through the process of how you prep for your sessions, how you put together your presentations, how you promote it, help people get in, excited about it, the process of actually hosting the sessions, as well as ultimately profiting from it in the beginning and ongoing. We're going to just talk about that in more detail. Um, today, I really want to give you a sense of what you can do with webinars. It's a lot of profit potential there. And then when we get inside our one-on-one -on -one sessions and uh, the group training at ProWebinars.com, I'm going to show you how this stuff works, and it works really well. Um, these, one of these in particular I love, and um, um, that's, I'm holding that for the session, um, but uh, there are definitely pros and cons to each of these models, and, and as you try them, you'll find the ones that work best for you. I'm going to talk about my favorites inside the Pro Webinar series. So let us get into our checklist. Okay, so here are some questions now that I want you to get your pen, get your pad. I want you to answer these questions so that you can ultimately figure out, well, you know, all of these sound really great. I want to do everything. <laughs> but obviously, LaShonda says I've got to start somewhere. So where should I start? Okay, so la last night I had asked several questions about, you know, what it is you're working on, um, what, how much you want to make, how much you've made, what projects you came up with at the end of last year, what did you actually complete? Because again, March 10th, 2014 could just as easily be March 10th, 2015. So you want to know and, and, and be conscious of the fact that time is going, right? You want to get clear on what it is you want to do and make it happen. Just that simple. So the first question for you to think about is two-part, and it's all about time, okay? One, when you think about time, how long do you want your actual series to be? When you think about a webinar or a teleconference, like I said, I'm, my training is called Pro, Pro Webinars, but you can basically apply the same information and do a teleconference series versus a webinar training, right, or even a support group. There are so many different kinds of webinars that you, you don't necessarily have to do a training series. You can do a support community for women um, where you just get women together and talk, and that's a whole other story. I'll talk about that later. But, again, you've got to be creative and think out of the box. You can't just look at what other people are doing online and try to say, I want to do that because they're doing that. It seems to work. You want to find the virtual conference style that works for you, it will work for your audience, and it complements what you're talking about, right? So when you think about time, how long do you want your webinar virtual session to be? Do you want it to be one hour? Do you want it to be four parts that are 15 minutes each or 20 minutes each? Do you want it to be, um, well, okay, I want to get 20 ladies and then I want to do five sessions a day for four days, or, you know, this is Women History Month, so I want to do, you know, webinars every week. What is the time frame you're trying to put together for your series, right? Keep in mind you also have to think about content, how much content or how many people. We'll talk about the people in a minute, but how much material do you have? 
You know, for some people you may go, well, I don't have that much, Shoshana. Can I really do a five-day? Then don't do a five-day. Just do 60 minutes. That's fine. Just do a 60-minute training or maybe a 90-minute training. Hell, a 30-minute. Think about what it is that you're trying to accomplish, how long you feel you want to work with somebody, how much information you have, okay? So that's part one of time, okay? Part two of time, how long do you want to work on this? You know, there are some clients, I was talking to a client um, in one of my insider circle calls a couple of weeks ago, and um, she said, okay, we're going to start working on this webinar thing, and LaShonda, I'm, I'm aiming to get this done by um, March. And I was like, how about April? Can we get it done in April? So, and she was like, mm, I, I think I might be able to, but you want to think about, you know, realistically for you, if it's a big thing that you're trying to put together, say you're trying to brand um, a multi-speaker, you know, 12 speaker session, maybe you want at least 90 days to put it together. Or you say, well, you know, Alessandra, there's so much information in me. I don't really have speakers. I just want to do a training. And I could do a training tomorrow with like 20 women. So then, okay, well, you know that you don't have speakers. It's just you. Um, how, again, going back to the first question, how long do you want your sessions to be? Um, but again, how long do you want it to take you to put this thing together? Okay? And so that's going to affect which one of these you choose. The bigger the webinar style, the longer it's going to take to put it together and package it and put it out there. You know, especially when you're working with other speakers, you want to let them know your policy, the procedures, whether or not you're charging or not, if there's an affiliate program or how you're going to market it. Again, if you're paying, um, we'll get to the, the profit in a second. But those are some things to keep in mind as far as time. Okay, that's question number one. Number two, capital. How much money are you going to invest into this process? Is it going to be minimal or not? So if it's a smaller webinar training, you may be able to do everything in-house. You may be able to contact, you know, a couple of customers in-house and say, hey, I'm doing this for you. Or, you know, do you want to put it together where you say, okay, well, Lashonda, I really like the idea of doing some sort of passive income ongoing project. Um, one of my clients, she does um, grief coaching, and, and we're working on her website. Um, I'm designing, uh, doing the redesign, hopefocuscoaching.com. And so um, the next phase of it is adding on a membership component and a private group for her, her coaching, right? So if you want to do that aspect of it where you're not um, doing one live event or doing pre-recorded sessions, but rather creating a membership space, a support group, a mentorship area on your website, do you have the capital to invest into putting that kind of webinar-based uh, platform together? Okay, something to think about. Or if you want to do a high-end um, webinar with speakers, do you have the capital to maybe get a big note, keynote speaker, so you can see if you can really push to get a 1,000 people in. Um, do you have the capital to get um, robust marketing platforms or what tools? I'm going to be talking about at Pro Webinars the tools I like to use when it comes to working on webinars. Um, I can tell you the first one I got started with was GoToWebinar, um, which I like, but it can be on the pricey side. So I'm going to be talking about some low-cost, strategies that people can use versus high-end ones. Um, quite a few clients have said, LaShonda, have you ever used anymeeting.com? I want to use Edimi. And I personally have not used any meeting, but I'm going to tell you the different ones that I like um, so that you can get a sense of what works best for me and then figure out what you would like to work for you. Um, but some of them are low cost. Some of them cost more. Some of them have monthly memberships. How much capital are you going to invest? And, and so you think about it, for example, um, if you're just going to do one session, right, you may need to get a platform that you just pay for that one month and then cancel. If you're going to do monthly membership, then obviously know that every month you're going to invest in a webinar conferencing tool that you have to pay for on a monthly basis. Or if you're going to do pre-recording, you may not even need to pay for a webinar software. You can use offline software. You can purchase offline software so that you can record your webinars, and you're not paying for something on an ongoing basis. So thinking about how much money you want to invest into your webinar is a, a, an important part of the process. Um, when I talk about 
coaching and teaching and speaking, pro webinars. I think the tools that I'm going to be sharing, you can get started for anywhere between $50 to $100, honestly, to put it together. It's minimal cost. Um, there are webinars, that really high-intensive webinars that you can put together and invest thousands of dollars into. I started off on a flostering budget, so I don't teach about that stuff. <laughs> I don't tell you how to. And I also, the fundamental of me when I come to Sister Sense, one, I help you make sense of money, making money online. Two, I like to keep more of the money that I make. So I don't go to the extreme when it comes to things like that. Um, but I will definitely tell you the cost-effective solutions that I use inside of the series. So, again, thinking about capital, writing down right now, well, realistically, LaShonda, I may be able to put $100 into this or $500 into this because I want to do the passive income stream versus I want to do my own personal one-to-one one -one training, something for you to think about. Connections, a big one. I kind of gave you some insider explanations as far as, if you do want speakers, who do you know? Like, what would you be talking about? I mean, we're in pro webinars. I'm going to talk about the purpose, and we're going to go into really understanding the complexities of what it is you want to do, your vision, and how you want to turn your vision into a virtual training. But you really need to know, if I'm talking about a particular topic, who would best fit with that, right? So you've got to be educated about are there people who you can email or call up today and say, girl, are you excited about doing this with me and have them be on board, right? So maybe you can write down, as we're talking right now, some people that, you you know, okay, based on what LaShawn is saying, I would love to do this kind of thing, and maybe I could email her, her, or her, or call her, right? Write down some names. You know, brainstorm right now of people you may potentially want to talk to um, about getting something together. So I know one of the ladies um, in my circle, Health and Wellness, we talked about her teleconference and, and, you know, thinking about, okay, if I want a fitness person on the call, I want somebody who does massage therapy or who does, um, you know, recipes and, and, and diet or somebody who does stress relief. So you want to think about, well, what am I talking about and who do I know versus people who you may not know but you think, okay, well, I want to go to her website and find out, you know, what she would be willing to do if she'd be interested in speaking. You may, believe it or not, there are a lot of big-name speakers who, they, if their schedule permits, they'll be willing to do something for free or for, you know, nominal cost just because they, you know, they've got the time or it's just in their spirit to do so. Um, for some people, Again, whether or not you're offering an affiliate opportunity or you're offering access to their list, um, some people like to get access to new people. So depending on who you are and what your circle is, they may be interested in working with you. So again, thinking about your time, your capital, and your connections, very important. Thinking about affiliate marketing, are you going to create something where you want to do an affiliate program and get more people in? You know, okay, if I want to get 100 people in or 200, 300, in addition to your own marketing or getting your speakers to market, do you want to get some sort of affiliate, affiliate system together so that you can give people an additional incentive to promote your, your webinar conference? You know, I've, I've done that for my affiliates, and I love when I send out, you know, you've got money via PayPal. It's just nice to um, be able to support those who support you and give them give them, you know, a piece of that percentage or commission for, you know, bringing in people to your event. And, again, depending on how you do it, you know, if you, you're bringing in three to $5,000 and then you're giving your affiliates like 20% or it's nominal, especially when it's a low-cost event and you're pocketing most of the money, which is one of the things that I like about virtual events. You know, I've been able to do local events and workshops and, you know, after I pay for the hotel and the catering and, you know, the space and the, the projector and the printouts, and, you know, I like to do it big. So I've got, you know, when my attendees come out to my power conference, the She Rocks the Web, they got the magazine, the pens, they got the CDs and all, all that stuff costs money, right? So <laughs> that's a percentage of your sales versus when you do a virtual event, more of that you get to pocket, which is one of the wonderful things about generating profit through webinars and teleconferences. So you want to think about, am I going to attach an affiliate program onto this? 
Um, if it's something that you're interested in doing, obviously that's going to affect your time frame because all of these things require time to set up. Again, you also want to think about your profit. I'm always about setting money markers. And you want to say to yourself, well, what ideally would I like to make? Right? Last Yesterday, for those of you who may not have been on the call last night, I said the first thing I want to do, you to do on this call tonight is write down how much money you set out to make last month. Write down how much money you think you made last month. Then write down how much money you know you made last month. Because one, in order for you to make money, you've got to be clear on how much you need to make. That's off the bat. So you want to say, okay, you know, LaShonda, I want to do a private training for five people, and my goal is just to bring in an extra $500 then if you bring in anywhere between 5, 10 to 20 people, depending on the price of registration, you can bring in your $500 easy, right? So you want to think to yourself, how much money am I setting out to make? It can't just be, okay, I put it together and I throw up a pack. Okay, well, I see everybody doing 97. So I'm going to do 97 because that's what I see. That's not the point. It's about how many people you realistically can get, how many sales you can close, and how much you want to make. That's the equation. You know, when I get clients who say, LaShonda, I just need more traffic. I need more traffic. I mean, I said, I don't think about it that way. I don't think about traffic. I think about my magic number because at the end of the day, if my goal today is to get in 45 people and I get in 45 people, I'm good. I don't need 4,500 people to come in because the 45 is my sweet spot, right? So you've got to think about what your sweet spot is, how much money you're interested in making, and then phase things in. You know, I think my first website, I was doing sites for like 99 or 200. Now I'm talking about the whole site. I'm not talking about a page. <laughs> I'm talking about a whole site, right? So you have to phase into higher levels if, you know, you feel like you kind of want to start out at a $7 level or, you know, whatever, $27, you know, training, whatever the case may be, if that's your comfort level. But then that's going to affect how much profit you want to make versus if you're doing an ongoing training and you want a membership site that brings you in, you know, $1,000, 1K, 2K a month, 5K a month, how many people do you want in that? How much are you going to charge for that? You know, think about your profit, what it is, what you want to get in when you close some sales, okay? And then last but not least, you want to think about marketing, which affects your time. If you want to create that free event with speakers that you're going to sell at the back end, that's going to take some time. So how much money are you going to pay, put into marketing? How much time are you going to put into marketing? I always say, well, if you broke, <laughs> if you ain't going to spend money, you're going to spend time. So you're going to have to expend the time for marketing if it's a big thing or if it's a high price point conference. If you know if you're doing a webinar training that's 297 or 497, um, you know, one of the trainings that I did in Jumpstart Your Business, I did a whole series on user engagement. And you should definitely listen to that one, especially for those of you who are trying to figure out, how do I engage my audience? You know, how do I use social media? And in that series, I did case studies on phenomenal, successful women entrepreneurs who right now are using virtual training, using social media, using the web to strategically market their businesses. One of those ladies was Marie Folio. Um, she does, you know, Marie TV. She's got wonderful trainings, trainings for women entrepreneurs that they can watch and follow her on YouTube. And quite a few of the ladies have started following Marie from my suggestions. They love watching the videos. She's got great information. She's doing um, B-School, which I believe is a six-week training program. It's all virtual. And I want to say it's if it's not 500, it's, a thousand. It's either four ninety seven or nine ninety seven. Don't quote me on it because I, I I'm, I'm not a part of B school, but I'm I'm familiar with uh, Marie. I follow her, and her virtual training is a very high end training. Um, she only does B school once a year. I believe she's able to generate um, a, what some people may consider to be a, a whole year salary just from doing B school once a year, but it's a, um, a large training. It's an in-depth training. It's something that she markets for a whole year that she's able to put on a price point of 500 to, if not $1,000, somewhere in between there per person because it's an intensive virtual training course. 
So again, when it comes to marketing, you want to think about how long it is you're going to market. When I talked about, you know, again, if you go on Sister Sense and it's jybreplays.sistersense.com so you can see the jumpstart your business replays. To have access, you've got to sign up. Um, and it starts at $7 if you want to sign up and look at the replays. But in that, I think it was about four to six part series that I did on user engagement, Marie uses YouTube to strategically market herself and share her information over the course of the year so that when B-School opens in January, she starts to aggressively market it more so that when it opens now, she's got her ideal audience. Right, So what are you going to do to market? Are you going to use something like YouTube? Are you going to use email? Are you going to use affiliates? You know, think about what are some things that you're going to do to market your, your, your um, conference, what you feel like you're comfortable doing. Um, those are really, really important parts of the process. You know, if you don't have a large circle, if you don't have a lot of money, it's okay. Those are some of the things I'm going to be talking about, how to work around those things at pro webinars and that series. Um, but really, the sky's the limit. You can have small events or big ones. You can have cost-effective, low-cost events, or you can have events that you have to invest a, quite a bit into. Again, it really depends on the, the points that I've, I've mentioned today in your checklist, your time, capital, connections, profit, affiliations, and your marketing. Okay? So those are the areas that you really have to look at, divide, and think about thoughtfully um, so that you get a better sense of, well, she's mentioned five, six web-based income streams for me. Based on that and me looking at these six components, I think I would like to start here. And, yes, you have to start somewhere, right? You can't do this all, but you can potentially start somewhere and go from there, okay? So, um, I want to, at this point, give you all an opportunity to um, ask me some questions and, and see if you have any aha moments. I love aha. So if you learned something on the call, you know, definitely uh, shout me out and tell me what you know and what you learned. Um, and like I mentioned before, uh, Pro Webinars five-day training starts on Wednesday, and you can sign up at prowebinars.sistersense.com. We're going to be going from Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Then you'll have the weekend to actually work on some of the activities that we'll be doing throughout the series. And then we're going to continue back into the final two days the following week to wrap up. So, um, and of course, you know, if you've got questions about that, definitely let me know. I know some people won't be able to participate in the actual sessions, but you can register either to participate live or just to simply get access to the replays so that you can follow along at your own pace. So, um, I'm just going to hit unmute here. And I may just mute a few people just so that there's no back noise. Um, but you are welcome to hit star six and unmute yourself um, if you would like to do so. Um, okay, so who's on the call? Any aha moments or questions for me based on what we talked about today? And you guys are all unmuted right now, so you can just jump in at any time. LaShonda, I just want to let you know. Oh. Sorry, I dropped, I dropped my head key. Oh, it's Robin. okay. Hey, Robin, <laughs> how are you? I'm great. Um, I'm glad I'm, you could make the call today. Yeah, I'm, I'm just like running errands, but I, you know, just put you on mute so I can listen in. And I'm excited well, about your web <laughs> seminar training. I'm going to send you a email in regards to my um, ideas. So okay, I just want good. I'm in for a minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wonderful. And, um, so, any ahas? What are you thinking about? Well, you know, I, I appreciate you saying what type of webinar um, you would like to do because I've been doing research on different webinars and I heard something by the name of. Um, webinar on ear where you can basically set it up where people can pay, you know, for a program. There's two different ways of doing it. You can set it up like that or you can link different payment plans to your webinar. You can correct me if I'm wrong. 
So um, I'm just going to continue to listen in because I'm outside in the city and it's very noisy. I don't want to interrupt your, your um, webinar too much. Well, good. I'm actually I'm, I'm glad that you're on the call. Yes, there are different payment options, and we didn't even get into that today. That's like a whole other story when it comes to charging, offering people payment options. But, yes, definitely send me an email. And, you know, if you, you uh, are registered, I don't know if you registered already, but um, the, the first two ladies who register within the next two hours, you will get um, a one-on-one -on -one session with me, so then outside of the group we can talk one-on-one -on -one about what it is you're trying to accomplish too. So um, send me an email and, and let me know okay. what you're working on, Robin. And, and I have one question. If we register today, yeah. do we have to do it within a certain amount of time, set up everything, or we can do it when we're ready? Like if it's time yes, limit? You, can, you can do it at your own pace. I'm basically going to go through the process and give people an opportunity to do what they can during the five-day training, but it's so that you're well-informed so when you're ready, you, you have sufficient information and tools to move forward. Okay, Hello. Thank you very much. Are you welcome? Hello. 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 Hi, this Hi. is Melanie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I just registered. I think I did, or I subscribed. I don't know if I should register separately for the web training. Um, that to register for the web training, you can do so at prowebinars.sistersense.com. And as soon as you register, it's going to shoot you over to a page just so that you can sign in, and then mm -hmm. I'll see that. So I know the first two ladies today, I'm going to send you information about doing the one-on-one -on -one with me, and then you're going to get access to the information about how to actually watch the webinars live and or access mm -hmm. the replays. So I'm going to sign up through the Pro Web, Web, Webinars? Yes, you're going to go to Pro Webinars, P-R-O-W-E-B-I-N-A-R-S, mm -hmm. yep. prowebinars.sense.com, okay. um, mm -hmm. and all the information is there. All right, I'm doing that right now. Okay, wonderful. Did you have any other questions for me? Um, I'm trying to do um, health and wellness, my Zumba experience via webcam. Is that something that you're, you work with? I do. I've done webcam. Um, do you have a particular question? or? Um, I, I want to just get it started. I want to start a web page. I want to you know, get it up and running because I don't, I don't know how to do that. Okay, so, you know, we'll talk about that some more, how you can – Now, um, mm -hmm. how much is the, um, is the, 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 um, the training? The five-day training is 125, and you have the option of signing up two parts for 75. So you can either oh. do um, a two-part or full payment today. Okay. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. And have a good day. You too. Bye. Anyone else want to chime in before we wrap up today? Hi, LaShonda. My name is Janelle Holland. I'm a mental health counselor in Georgia. Hey, how are you? I'm well. I was really interested um, in taking the webinar and trying to get some um, passive income beyond just doing the counseling session. So I get a lot of calls from other counselors who frequently ask me how to um, start their own private practice or how to do their billing because sometimes that can be quite um, a maze to figure out. So I've been thinking about doing some webinars, um, mm -hmm. teaching those things specifically. So I really appreciate what you put out today. Oh, thank you. You can definitely do that. I think um, what I find is one of the things that motivated me to start doing them is you'll get certain questions all the time that you would love to answer, but then it takes a lot of time from your business, right? right. So when you do the webinars, you just have an opportunity to say, well, you know what, go here <laughs> and watch that. Okay. Um, and, and so that, one, it really helps with time. And then, two, whether you're giving them the pre-recording or doing like a group for some of these um, clients, mm -hmm. then, you know, you, you can work with them on a more uh, in-depth basis um, versus, you know, the really quick, you know, well, let me talk to you for 15 minutes over the phone. And, you know, certain things, it's easier for people to see it for them to get a sense of how it works. Right. So I think that's something that you can do. But did you have any questions? For no, me I just wanted to say thank you so much. Oh, well, good. Thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm. Rashonda, this is Eva. Hey, Eva, how are you? I'm well, I'm well. 
great webinar. Thank you so much. It's very inspiring for me because I've been thinking about jumping in the webinar. So I do have a question. You mentioned user engagement. Where would I find that on the um, Sisters Net site? So that was in one the number of the area. Yes, that was one of the jumpstart your business calls. So you go to jybreplays.sisterfence.com. Say it again, J, Y as in yellow, B as in boy. Yes, J as in jump, Y as in your, B as in business. So jybreplays.sisterfence.com, and you're going to see all the replays there. We've done just about everything, right? So we did a couple of series, sessions on user engagement, um, affiliate marketing, blogging, Twitter marketing. Last week we did email, subject headers. Um, so all the replays are there. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Oh, hey, I just had a question. Um, I enjoyed your information, first of all, and thanks again. You always knock that. I've been following you for many years. Thank you. And I know exactly what I want to do. The part that I struggle with is putting the content together. I won't be able to sign up right now to be one of the first two ladies to take advantage of your one-on-one -on -one because I'm at my daughter's school. So I wanted to know, do you offer that one-on-one -on -one at a different price or something like that? Because I do have questions. There is one particular part I personally struggle with, and that's coming up with how to put that content together. Like I'm comfortable doing webinars. Um, I just struggle with putting it on paper. Like I have all these visions, and I know what I want to do in my head, but I struggle with putting the presentation part together. Mm -hmm. So yeah, knowing that we're actually going to do one session just on presentations, I believe that's going to be session number two. Um, I do offer one-on-one -on -one sessions, and you can okay. sign up in either one of two ways. If you go to yeah. callme.sistersense.com, you can okay. schedule a 30-minute or a 60-minute session with me. It's either $30 or $60. And um, that's an opportunity to do just one session. Also, okay. if you go to join.sistersense.com, that's where we have our online power circle. So if you sign up for the insider circle, you get access to the weekly calls, plus you get access to one-on-one -on -one sessions with me every month. Oh, okay. So it really it depends on whether or not you just want to do one session or you want to do two sessions every month. Oh, okay. So um, this would be still part of, like for example, I'm going to do, I'm going to sign up tonight. That this would still be part of your five-day course, where I can just still pay an additional for the one-on-one. -on -one. Well, the, yeah, that's separate. So the five-day course um, for those who are, you know, going to get access to that bonus one-on-one, -on -one, and then if you miss that, you can go to callme.sisterfence.com to schedule a session or join. Okay. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Mashanda? Hello? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, hey, Lashanda, this is Sandra. I just wanted to, um, first of all, say thank you, and I kind of wanted to give a shout-out. I'm not in all of your programs or anything, but just for the ladies that are on today, you have to, like, I want to give a round of applause to you because you truly are a blessing to all of us on the line. Aww, thank you. Uh, and this is, this is this is genuine. I'm not trying to pull your leg or anything like that. Last night I struggled with what you said. You said, what have you actually completed? And that gnawed at me mm -hmm. so much. I got up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I went and pulled out this box that I have. I don't have issues of the content. I can write it up. I have books and stuff. It's just the fact that I have this box of things that are not completed. Mm. And I said, that was so powerful when you said, what? ideas that you have that you really, this is me, of course, paraphrasing, but it was the ideas that I have in a box that are really my money. You know, we all want so much money, but actually it's the money we already have. It's kind of like the Bible when you had the, um, the woman who had the oil and the cake and everything. So it's like we have everything we need. We just need a little push. So what yeah. have you completed? And I just wanted to say thank you. I have already signed up for the class. I'm in it. And for those ladies who are kind of on the fence, I know if you have been blessed by today or even yesterday, I'm telling you, she's not paying me. I'm not an affiliate. I'm not I'm I believe genuine. You. I believe you. <laughs> I believe you, sister. <laughs> I'm, being, 
you sign up. That. I truly appreciate that. I mean, for me, the process is, you know, it's hard to figure out how to make sense of this on your own. And so I just basically I want to show you what I've been able to learn. And I do agree that when you look at it, you look at your box of ideas, everything that you need is already inside of you, but you have to put it out there. And as an expert, for those who are speakers, teachers, and coaches, I find that when we actually do the work is when we learn because then you talk to people and you find out, oh, this is what they need or this is what they're looking for. And, and that's why I'm really pushing you all to go pro and to implement because when you start to implement and work with your clients more, you get a better sense of what they need and really fine-tune your offers. And so, yes, I'm excited about it, and I'm glad that you're going to be inside of our training this week. Thank you. Oh, uh, LaShonda, this is – Janelle McLeod again from Atlanta, Georgia. I have one more question. Sure. Um, my, my last question, and then i got to run. I'm at my daughter's school. Um, my last question was, are these five courses recorded? Because I work during the day at her school, so naturally yes. I have to do everything by night because she has special needs. So yes. That they okay, absolutely are recorded, and you get access to the replay. So essentially you, you have both the option to listen to it live and okay. or to listen to the replays. Okay, perfect, beautiful. Okay, yeah. I sent you a private message um, from me, Janelle McLeod. You can just ignore it because I already asked you my questions right now. Okay. But I'm, I'm going to hang up because i got to run back in the building. But thanks again for everything, and God bless you. Oh, thank you. You're so welcome. Well, right, ladies, I've, I've, I've got to get ready for a one-on-one -on -one session at 2 o'clock, so I've got to wrap it up for now. But I'm so excited about this week. Um, I will be posting today's replay as well as yesterday's replay on Sister Send so that you can listen to that as well. Send me your emails, lhenry at sistersense.com. More to come, ladies. Have a beautiful and blessed week. Take care. Bye.